Hey friend, grateful you're here. We're in the Catskill. Have a stack of books with me. You know what that means. Say it with me. 24 hour readathon. I feel like this is gonna be a little tradition between you and I. It is one of my favorite things to come out here and just put my phone in a room far, far away and just hunker down and read. Currently in the Catskills, currently in New York in general, it has been raining nonstop. Last week we had really bad flooding. I will say I was a little scared to come out here because, and I'm gonna knock on literal wood, but if it gets too windy, sometimes the power gets knocked out, but I took the risk. I put it all on the line to just come and read out around colorful trees and nature. So I do have a bunch of books with me. I'll quickly go over them. I will probably not get to this entire stack, but I have a bunch of teenies here and I was really excited for teenies week this year. It's one of my favorite things towards the end of the year. Jess would host this like tiny's readathon and it was sort of the last little push towards getting to that arbitrary goal that we all set. But it's also a time Time to just like focus on the novella as a form and it's like the highlight kind of of my reading year so for some reason in my head I thought it was in November and then I was like no it usually happens in September but I've um, been pretty inactive on IG so I hope everything's okay I think the other Jess <laughs> posted a weekend readathon in her name so yeah in continuation of that theme we have some tinies here I have two chunkier books one that's pretty thematic and that I have been saying I wanted to read for a while and another one that I just haven't really curious about so let's quickly go through the stack we have in the act by rachel ingles i mentioned this before but renee had been reading this and i really liked how she spoke about it thin skin by jen chaplan this was kindly sent over by pantheon and it's a collection of essays about the body and beauty and capitalism i think <laughs> I don't think I'll finish this, but I would like to just do a little taste test, get an essay or two, and just to get the vibe, the feel of it. Oh, I got new glasses. I, I feel like people change up their glasses all the time, but for me, it's so hard to find a shape that fits me. So these are the new, <laughs> the new frames. Sorry, I have to introduce them because I feel like they're a main character, me and my blindness. Bonsai by Alejandro Sambra, a book that I bought in Mexico City thinking it was a Kate Zambrino book because someone had recommended Kate Zambrino and I saw Alejandro Sambra and I was like, yeah, that's the one they recommended. Nope. But we have this book and when I posted that video, a lot of people were like this is a really good one so very excited to get into this i who have never known men by jacqueline hartman this was recommended to me for the 12 books 12 friends challenge and it's also a translated work that i have seen make its rounds and so i'm very curious about it it is translated from french yeah very excited to slip into this one i feel like i started this one and I tried to start reading it right after i read women talking and it felt too similar and i was like i can't do that again <laughs> I feel like we've had enough of a cleanse of the palette where I can like enter this one ready at the helm. We have my torn copy of Autumn by Ali Smith because it is currently Autumn. I read it beginning and what really took me away was the writing style. It was very playful prose and curious to see what this is about. It was interesting because it started off at like a post office but then there was like a dead dude. I don't know, but excited. <laughs> we have Annie John by Jamaica Kincaid. I feel like this is a tradition, but also I feel like I need to do a Jamaica Kincaid during a 24 hour readathon. I didn't do it at my last one, but the one before that we read Lucy. So very excited to get to Annie John. Tell me how it ends an essay in 40 questions by Valeria Luiselli. Yeah, I haven't, I don't think this year I've done any Luiselli, which is, I was gonna say out of character, but like I just found her like the year before the last. <laughs> and finally, a book that I have been putting on TBRs, I feel like constantly, but have not gotten to, A Girl Story by Annie Arnaud with my little bookmark from books and books. So yeah, those are the books that we will be sampling from during this 24 hour reading vlog. Oh, my phone is charging. Let me go get it so I can start the most important thing, the timer. It's so crazy how like my, I don't know, my shoulders just feel so relaxed. I feel like my breath s slow down. I think it's just not being cramped in an apartment and like being able to look out and also it's raining and it's, it's just really nice here. Oh my God, I forgot to add the audiobook that I'm listening to. Okay, just bear with me for a second. So I recently finished Fourth Wing. Cannot give you any coherent anything about that book except that I had a time reading it. It was a lot of fun. I listened to it on audio. It was sort of just like background noise for me unless it was like a fight scene and then I was totally engaged and had a lot of fun reading it and then my friends were like yeah this is nothing compared to Akotar, <laughs> A Court of Thorn and Roses and so I started listening to A Court of Thorn and Roses because the hold came in and I was listening to it on my Libby app and then we were in the group chat and my friends were talking and they're like oh I didn't like the narrator's voice in the graphic audiobook and I was like what the hell is a graphic audiobook? <laughs> 
<laughs> Have you all heard the good word about the graphic audiobook? Oh my god. Send me the sample of the graphic audiobook. You hear the babbling brook. You hear the crunching of the leaves under their feet as they go. There's like music in the background acting and it is such an immersive, fun listen. I feel like I have just discovered a whole new world. So I have been thoroughly enjoying A Court of Thorn and Roses. I listened to the first part of the graphic audiobook and purchased with my own coin the second part because Audible only gives you one credit a month. And so I will be listening to the, the second part of A Court of Thorn and Roses. Who would have thunk it? That is the you no know, wild card that I hadn't expected in my 2023 reading landscape. But here we are, very, very riveted by Akotar. It is definitely better written than Fourth Wing. And my friend Mish was saying that she thinks that the writer from Fourth Wing, what is it? Jessica Yaros, is that her name? Had read Akotar before and then just like got on her manuscript. Cause even like the terminology they use, like at one point in Fourth Wing, she uses the term like, my eyes grew so wide, my brows touched my hairline. I had never heard that before. And the first time I heard it, I like cackled because that's such a that's such a mental image. Uh, and then she kept using it. And then when I started listening to Akotar, I heard that and I was like, oh, is this the fantasy version of I let go of a breath I didn't even know I was holding in like romances? And she was like, no, I think that lady just took it from Akotar and put it in her book. But yes, we are listening to Akotar. So that's like the last little book on this weekend's reading stack. Let me get the timer. So we are currently at zero. Oh, which one should I start with? I think we are going to start with Homegirl Jamaica. So book has been selected, timer has been set. Let's do this. This may or may not be my first time. This is my first time. <laughs> I don't like playing with fire, but anyway. Started reading Annie John and my God, what a, I don't know what she injects into her writing, but it's so just full of tenderness. I'm like sucking my lip the whole time I'm reading it. Just like, not about to cry, but it's very, this is distracting me. It, it's just, yeah, so beautiful. Also very interesting to read this after having read Lucy because it's always interesting to read through a writer's work because you sort of see the things that they're obsessed with. And Lucy was very much about that complicated mother-daughter relationship. And this in the beginning felt so tender because she just loved her mother so much and the intimacy and the world that they share, she calls it a paradise. And now she's starting to feel the growing pains of what it means to become an adult and have to individuate from your mom. And yeah, it's just so sweet. <laughs> but in the beginning it started off with like her oh i think that's a close it now let's see but when i close it <sighs> okay i feel like it shuts off really fast i'm gonna leave it open oh Let's just do that. But yeah, in the beginning, it was all about like her morbid curiosity with deaths and she didn't know that children die. A girl her age had passed from a different school and she was like so curious about what that dead body looked like. So yeah, has that bit of weirdness that's very Kincaid, but also just so full of heart. Let me attend to this, but yeah, I'm really liking it. We are five hours into the 24. I just finished Annie John. It took me a bit because I was crying. <laughs> Is my brain mush right now? Yes. Should I be trying to put thoughts together about this book immediately after finishing? Absolutely not, but I need to set this aside and not talk about it for a bit. So this is a story about Annie John. She is, well, it starts from recounting her relationship with her mom when she's younger and she describes it with so much warmth. It's like a love full of affection and wonder and magic. There's a lot of like full body weight and leaning and hugs and it's just so tangled and affectionate. It's interesting because in the beginning, the book starts off with like this morbid curiosity about death. And I think 
think as we see Annie get like physically bigger, taller, there is this sort of like fracture. It's not just Annie getting physically bigger. The ways that love between a mother and a daughter sort of shifts and transforms as a young child becomes a young adult. And I, I don't know if this happens to everyone, but I definitely, from the women in my life and just like my own experiences, there is this sort of just like tightness and closeness. And then this, yeah, there's like this fracture that happens and then there's just so much anger and there's so much <laughs> pushing away. There's a, a death of something that happens. So this was really, it was hard, but I think it's also fascinating as like a study on Kincaid because she just seemed to be very obsessed or from the two books that I have read, uh, Lucy and this one. It's, it's really curious. I remember in A Lost Daughter, Elena Ferrante talks about how your child takes like all of your qualities and makes a parody of it. Just how difficult it is to see parts of you reflected in this little human and then see that human individually. I'm trying to understand because we see this distancing from Annie and her mom and you can see Annie's point of view but I didn't completely or I was trying to understand mom's point of view and I think it's I think it's also really interesting that books earlier on focused on mother-daughter relationships but from the perspective of the daughter and now we're sort of getting that perspective of the mom and that is really like it's an interesting perspective for me but yeah this was really heartbreaking I think with Lucy it was like a clear understanding of that divide but this was far more like ambiguous and so more realistic and so more affecting. I like couldn't stop reading it, but also heaviest experience reading it. Yeah, it's just full of like mourning and anger, but not so much anger, just yeah, it's kind of like when you have a growth spurt and you're just like trying to make sense of this new dimension and feeling not at home in like the previous iteration of your role as like a, a child and but also embodying that new person. I don't know. This was it was good, but it was I need levity and I don't know that I brought levity that was not a good book to start with I loved it but not a good book to start with so this what is this about okay I think this is about like an experience with an older dude which is that doesn't seem as heavy to me and then this what is oh Trump era <laughs> And this is too heavy. Definitely not reading this one right now. This one, maybe I'll do Sambra. Let's see. Okay, Julio and Emilia, two Chilean university students who are seeking truth in great literature, find each other instead. They fall together, drift apart. Okay, love art memory. This seems <laughs> like it'll pull me out of what could be a very dark spiral. And this, I feel like this might also be pretty light. Ah, infidelity, my favorite. So we're gonna do this and then this next. It's been like pouring out like on and off which has been really nice. Oh my gosh in the book she was talking about this like, dark thing that forms in her chest and like grows and I was just like mmm ripe, mmm Sula, mmm I feel it in myself but anyway. I wish I could like take a walk or something but I guess we're just diving in so let's start this one. Timer will continue. Mm. It's freezing, but I also want the soundscape. <laughs> I just read the first line. This is not light. First line says, In the end she dies and he is alone, although really he had been alone for some years before her death, before Amelia's death. No one's supposed to die. This is supposed to be the light reading. <laughs> Is that what they mean when they drift apart? Someone dies? I don't know. I mean, it's it's short. It's 76 pages. All right, we'll do it. <laughs> I'll power through. Okay, no, it's good, it's good. Shaking city girl out. <laughs> We're going back inside. <laughs> I 
have been making poor decisions today. So right after Andy and John, I started to read Bonsai. This is actually delightful, but then I wanted to make dinner. So I was like, oh, I'm still listening to Akotar. So let me listen to that while I get dinner ready. And it got to the part where my adrenaline's pumping and we all know that I am very faint of heart. So why, when I am alone in the woods, am I listening to this book? Um, thesis of that is that I'm scared and now I need a cleanser from my cleanser because Aquadar was supposed to be my cleanser from like the heavy emotional stuff but now I'm scared because I'm alone so <laughs> I guess the thoughts are that this is wonderful and Aquadar is actually a banger so I'm gonna get ready for bed and try to palette cleanse from my palette cleanser and I'll check back in tomorrow freezing so I have my handy dandy heat check on so last night I don't know my timer oh I have to pause my timer actually one second so we're at about 12 hours on the timer I have it charging because it's been working overtime <laughs> last night I was like in between a court of thorn and roses and bonsai and I started listening to nine women writer begin again it's about this woman who is recounting her divorce in the chapter that's sort of unfolding in front of her after that and she talks about like the new freedoms and the new understandings of self that she has sort of uncovered but she makes sense of it through a lot of different writers like mary wollstonecraft elena ferrante tony morrison and the like i actually had received an arc of this from echo just haven't gotten around to it but i wanted to listen to the audiobook and yeah it's, it's been a really nice lesson i feel like i was listening to a podcast about it and that's what reignited my interest in it that first essay is about mary wollstonecraft and her affair and how she like attempted unaliving twice because of it yeah it's been an interesting listen i decided to pause it and listen to it on the way back home but it was a nice way to sort of bring me down from the absolute terror i was feeling last night i was feeling so jumpy because a court of thorn and roses baby that is a book okay so i read fourth wing to like be in the conversation i was like okay i guess like the battle scenes were cool it was like somewhat adrenaline-y but for the most part it was kind of like background noise for me like i was semi-interested uh, that's a lie i was like interested when i was listening to it but a court of thorn and roses especially this graphic audiobook holy moly that was really really good it was well written i was kind of judging y'all with the fourth wing one but i completely understand with court of thorn and roses so i'm going to i don't know i'm gonna maybe pause because i was like i gotta buy the next one <laughs> but i'm gonna pause and just chill for a second we did also finish bonsai and this was a really interesting little confusing little book it felt like it was a russian nesting doll of stories so what is this about this is about emilia and julio from the first sentence it tells you that emilia dies and julio lives and the rest is literature and then through this we're sort of learning about how they get to know each other about julio's previous entanglements and emilia's previous relationships how they sort of come together and how they part and then he becomes obsessed with a bonsai tree and there's a part where he is he's going to transcribe a book for this writer gasmuri and gasmuri is writing about this couple this he and she and then they plant a plant <laughs> which signifies their love but then when the plant dies their love dies and then the girl dies and so it just felt like the the story of julio and emilia was like melding with Kazmuri's story yeah and i was very confused at the end because then we have this little piece where it says read a selection from alejandro sambra forthcoming novel a private life of trees and then it's also about someone who's like looking at bonsai trees and i'm like is this part of it like <laughs> I'm so confused. They listened to a podcast about it and they were saying that we're learning about Julio and Emilia's story and we're learning about Sambra's story. They're talking about how with the bonsai tree, it's not a tree until it's outside of the container. So the container and the plant are working together and that's sort of what's happening here. And it's funny because the thing that links Julio and Emilia together is that they both lie about having read 
Proust, Marcel Proust. They talk about how long it is and how even if you've read it, you're still looking forward to reading it because you haven't really read it and how much there is to uncover in this lengthy tale. But it's interesting because this is also a book that you can probably reread over and over again and then feel like you're reading for the first time because it's so trippy. Is my nose running? <laughs> That's attractive. Yeah, this was really interesting. I feel like I should probably read it again. It was super, super fast, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused about it, but I really liked his writing. They were talking about different writers. The fabric of their relationship was very literary. And so it was like really interesting to see them, their like romantic rituals as like reading something and finding the erotic in text and how there's always eroticism in text and then acting that out before engaging in erotics themselves and and yeah and how like there are the loves that devastate you and whether or not it's worth it and whether or not we embark on these things knowing that we're going to be devastated and that being okay and there was a lot of oh it is raining let me run inside but there's a lot of falsity while seeking truth and it's also like literature seeks truth i don't know i don't think i made any sense here but this also didn't really make sense so <laughs> but i'll probably read it again it was very interesting i'm super curious not to read the chilean poet i was reading an article that said is sambra is his word gimmicky it's funny because people say like a lot of his like his, i guess he has another book that's in the format of multiple choice questions that mimics like a chilean entry exam and people were like yeah and then this one and then they talk about the chilean poet being far more conservative and i was like maybe i need or far more traditional something like that so yeah i'm very very excited because the writing was beautiful. I really enjoyed the writing. Yeah, so I am going to run inside because it is drizzling and I'm going to pick up Rachel Ingalls. Yeah, I'm going to read in the act. Let's get that and then I'll see where we're going to go from there. It's been a fun reading evening. I'm glad I finished A Court of Thorn and Roses because I don't think I could have done another night of that panic. But yeah, let's go get the other book. Can I also tell you like a funny secret? Not a secret, but I think I mentioned this, but the graphic audio for A Court of Thorns and Roses is really good. But whenever they would have scenes where people were like kissing or making out, the grunting was so obnoxious. <laughs> But I guess you can't do like convincing grunting because that's that's a whole other app. I, I just thought it was really funny. It was so fantastic except for that. Wow, I'm like, I'm not upset that I waited so long, but I'm glad that there are many books. And it totally reminded me of Twilight. I was actually watching a video last night. I'm going to put it here of a YouTuber rereading the Twilight series. And I was like, oh my God, I kind of want to do the same. I remember we went to Forks, Washington, my two friends and I. We were doing like a Pacific Northwest trip and we camped out in Forks, Washington and the whole town is just like dedicated to Twilight. And we were like at La Push Beach reenacting scenes. As soon as I got home, I like watch all four movies and I was tempted to reread the books but like my TBR is always so long and like overwhelming that I didn't I just didn't do it but now I kind of want to maybe after this series I also want to rewatch. I'm gonna put the video here but Katie did a video on the different types of romances and my friends are like oh this is a I don't know they have like their all of the language really elaborated when they are talking in the group chat and I'm just like so apparently this is a fantasy romance I'm learning and those are fun and I think that's what Twilight was. I think I don't like the whole exceptional human thing that's kind of like, you know, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. So anyway, let's get to reading. updates. One, I can't stop thinking about the ending of Akotar. Therefore, I am this close to buying book two. I was outside and I was enjoying it. I came inside for a second, big mistake, and now I cannot go back outside because it is actually freezing. I don't know what, what lies my body was engaging with, but I'm um, very cold. And three, living in a city is just another lie that we, like just being able to look out to mountaintops, that's, I feel like that's natural. Like we should be able to look and not see brick. I don't know. This is just, I'm just sitting in silence staring at like distance, trees and sky and like everything feels good. And I'm like, this feels like it should be the normal. This is all to say that I want to move out of the city. Sometimes I'm like, no, and then I'm like, yeah, but all right, this is a big parentheses because it has nothing to do with the video, but yeah, I'm gonna sit for a second and see if the next move is to buy. What is the second book even called? I don't know, but if to buy that book or to continue with the Rachel Ingalls book. I should just finish that one because it's 60 pages and then I could just return it to the library. I wonder if I should pick up an essay from Thin Skin as well. I don't know. Or tell me how it ends. I feel like I'm, I'm now ready for a little bit of heavy. Anyway. And I don't have an umbrella and I left everything outside. Oh my God. Okay. 
feel like there's too much chaos going on. I'm gonna, I saw that Nina posted on the YouTube, so I'm gonna watch YouTube for like an hour. So we'll pause here. Am I hungry? I might be hungry too. I think I'm still just reeling from the end of that book. That was so good. Wow. Wow. It's done. But why is this already at a thousand? What happened to hello? How are you? Oh my God. I do vow to not make this an Akhtar reading vlog though. So this is gonna be the last time you hear me talk about it. I'm gonna keep my timer going because we are reading. I'm gonna make lunch and then I'll check back in once I pick up Rachel Ingalls. Not what I was expecting, I don't think, but interesting. <laughs> oh, this is definitely not what I thought when I read the blurb. Wow, okay. 